So one thing I've noticed on these Chiltrix units, at least the indoor coils that I've got, unless they've changed since I bought them last year, is they don't actually have an overflow shutoff for the condensate drain. It's a fairly easy fix. I've got a $10 unit here from Amazon. When the float comes up, it just breaks the continuity in here. So all I gotta do is interrupt the circuit with this guy. Now, in my case, the circuit w is gonna be down to the electronic ball valve that allows the water into the indoor coil unit. Probably do some research and find out if there's a way to turn off the thermostat on the indoor coil unit. Uh, it does have some wires and it's got some for on off. I'm just not sure exactly how those interact with the thermostat on the unit. I have a feeling that would probably work. But anyway, I was gonna show a quick um, tear down of this coil unit and how I installed this puppy. So I'm gonna need access to both sides here. On the thermostat side, I'm gonna pull our rubber plug, set that aside. We've just got a Phillips head screw down here. And then this should pop right up. If I just pull it from the bottom. And you just gotta watch out for these screws right here. They just run down into slots. All right, so we've got that open. Let's grab the other side. So pull my rubber plug out. Pop this guy up. All right, so this here is my condensate pan. Excuse the darkness. Now, my problem's going to be that this uh, float switch is too tall. So it's got adjustment on here, but it's already adjusted up as far as it can go. So what I need to do is uh, bend up this bracket so that I can install it up by about a half inch or so. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off of the bracket to make it easier to work with. Got it headed up there. So I'm gonna take it right here and bend that back down. Cause it can it can sit at an angle, it'll work fine. So something like that. Pop this back on. So let's see how well this fits. I think I um I think I pulled this too far towards a 90 degree angle. So I need to push this back up. Like that. So it's angled a bit more. There we go. All right, so that's in there. Float rests on the, the bottom of the condensate pan, so that should be just fine. So now, I just need to run these wires back over to the other side where all the thermostat controls are. Just an idea of how this works. These are the two wires off of the float switch. If I put a, a multimeter on here on a continuity test, right now, they would be zero ohms or thereabouts because they'd be connected. And then as soon as this switch, as soon as this float comes up and clicks, then that's going to be open, so there'd be no continuity. So that's how the switch works. All right, so let's run these wires up and over here. All right, so now we're here on the other side, and we've got our two black wires that are charged with 24 volts AC when the thermostat comes on. My green and red wire here, pair of wires. This runs down to my electronic ball valve that opens when the thermostat comes on. So then my black and red wire here this one here, runs to my laundry room where I've got a set of relays on the wall. What we want to do today is we want to interrupt the power to my ball valve and we want to have my green wire here. All right, so we want this green wire to be interrupted by these black wires that are from my float. So let's get these stripped just a tad more. 
so that I can solder it together. That way, whenever the float comes up, the circuit will be interrupted, the ball valve will close. Therefore, no cooling will happen. Therefore, no more condensate will be created. All right, got me some heat shrink here. Pop that on the black wire, and we'll twist these up together. Yes, that thing is having a hard time focusing, but it'll be okay. And just bend this guy over without burning myself. Just slip that puppy on. Now for some heat gun action. <sighs> We've got that running there, and we need the other black wire, which is hidden here. So the other black wire here is going to connect my relay wire. There we go. And then this guy needs to connect up in here. Twist these guys together. Come down there. So we're back together. Now let's test this out and see if it works the way we expect it to before we button everything back up. So when I turn the thermostat on, you'll hear a beep, and then directly after, you should hear very faintly the ball valve opening. I'll stick you a little closer to it. So the ball valve opens and closes. So now what we need to see is we need to hear the ball valve opening and closing when float switch comes up. So let's do this. Oh, you know what? I gotta turn it on first. All right, so unit on, and you might hear the fan start blowing as well. So that was the ball valve closing. And there's it opening again. So, it seems to be working as expected. So that's all there is to installing a float switch where there wasn't one. To realize there's nothing new, and actually I really should get one of these for my upstairs air conditioner. I don't believe that it has one. Um, it may or may not have a secondary drain, but then when the primary clogs, you don't know that the primary clogged, and then the secondary clogs, and you leak everywhere. So, get another thing on my list that I should go check out. But, hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments. Um, hit a like and subscribe if you're interested in some more things that I'm doing to increase the efficiency of my Chill Tricks system. Hope you all have a wonderful day.